There are oases of comfort throughout the world. However, the earth offers few pleasures for most of its inhabitants. For his 10,000 years of grubbing a living off the planet, man has found life for the most part to be cruel. Disenchantment abounds, fatigue, hunger, and cold. However, nature, almost as an afterthought, softened her terms. She sprinkled the harsh earth with a variety of plants, each offering momentary escape, a passport from reality. Their protective effects have been known since the time of the ancients. In virtually any of the hot countries of the world, where the soil is fertile, and farmers still employ the oldest methods of cultivation, flourishes a plant scientifically known as Papaver somniferum, more commonly known as the opium poppy. Its pods contain a milky fluid that for centuries provided the raw material for one of the most demoralizing and dissipating vices in the world. Known as far back as 4000 BC, use of opium historically centered on the Mediterranean. Eventually, Arab and Persian traders introduced the mystic wonders of the poppy to all the communities with whom they bartered. By the 16th century, India was cultivating it. In the 17th century, China discovered the euphoric delights that came from smoking it. Opium dens, set back in sinister alleys, flourished throughout the Far East. Even though millions of Chinese were thrust into moral and physical degradation, the use of opium was actually romanticized in literature by Edgar Allan Poe, Thomas De Quincey, and Samuel Taylor Coleridge, all brilliant writers, and each an opium taker. Its use had become such a problem in China that the emperor issued edict after edict forbidding its import. In spite of this, in the 1800s, British and American sea captains bought shiploads of opium at the great auctions in Calcutta and traded them illicitly at Chinese seaports. Then the emperor cracked down. In 1838, in one hall, he confiscated six million dollars worth of opium from the British ships at Canton. England retaliated with a naval squadron and the notorious opium wars were on. Although she would be censured in the eyes of the world, the war enabled Britain to force a treaty giving her the greatest port in the Far East, Hong Kong. As well as unrestricted opium trade for her enterprising sea captains. Then, in the 19th century, a German refinement. Through a relatively simple chemical process, raw opium was transformed into morphine base. In 1898, another refinement from Germany. From morphine base came the derivative, heroin. It took at least 60 centuries to bring Poppy's euphoric effects from the cradle of civilization all the way to the opium pipes in Canton. But within only a few decades, modern science was able to funnel the Poppy's impact straight into the central nervous system in one cool blast. Today, thousands of prisons and hospitals all over the world are crowded with patients who have experimented with the poppy's final derivative and who have become addicted to it. Its astronomical profits on the street corners of the Ginza in Tokyo, the Piccadilly Circus in London, and the Great White Way in New York have made it the world's number one illicit commodity. A deck of heroin sold on a metropolitan sidewalk is the final transaction in a long series of closely guarded clandestine operations. Charles Siragusa, former deputy commissioner of narcotics, has first-hand knowledge of all of them. The illicit narcotic traffic, uh, the route of it is not, not quite as complex as it would appear. Uh, Turkey still remains as the uh, principal source of the raw material, which is opium. 
Uh, the opium is in process at the morphine base, sometimes in Turkey, and other times in uh, Syria and Beirut and Lebanon. Uh, the French now have control of the Lebanese market. They've been associated with them in the all sorts of illicit international rackets for many years. The Lebanese, the seldom morphine base of the French. Now these French Corsicans who have had the traditional ties with them for many, many years, arranged for the smuggling of the morphine base into France. But Marseille is the uh, capital of the Corsican underworld for all of France. Once in Marseille, chemists take over, converting morphine base into heroin. This is the most difficult phase of the entire industry. Skilled chemists are not easy to find. A Turkish farmer sells 10 kilos of raw opium, or about 22 pounds, for $350 on the black market. Through conversion, it is reduced to one kilo of heroin, now worth $3,500. Now they've got to sell the heroin. The ones with the customers in the United States are the mafia hoods, uh, mostly in New York City, Chicago, the West Coast. Heroin, in its relatively pure form, enters the United States in a variety of ways. The Port of New York is by far the most common route and is the main target for Narcotic Bureau investigators working hand in hand with customs inspectors. An estimated two tons of pure heroin is annually smuggled into the States, and it's considered a good year when the inspectors manage to intercept 100 pounds of it. Smuggling is a fine art, and the Corsicans are considered to be the finest practitioners in the world. Today, the automobile is a favorite hiding place, and there is hardly a part of the chassis or body that is not, at one time or another, offered concealment for big heroin shipments. The second major port of entry into the United States is the Mexican border. This is the main entrance for illicit marijuana shipments, but a good supply of heroin slips through as well. We are in our vault in which all the marijuana and heroin which is seized is stored until the criminal case against the defendants is terminated by federal court action. This contraband is concealed in most ingenious ways, in vehicles and on persons. In fact, you can name a place that you feel contraband could be concealed, and I can cite you an instance where we have found it there. Some months ago, we encountered a young fellow entering the United States from Mexico eating an ice cream cone. A search revealed that he had an ounce of heroin concealed in the ice cream cone. In this area, we also have a number of yachts, some 5,000 private yachts based in this area, all of which have the facility or capability of going to Mexican waters. This poses quite a threat, as do the increasing number of private aircraft crossing the international boundaries. Once the heroin reaches its American distributors, it is blended with milk sugar and is cut at least one more time by the peddler himself. The heroin strength is now only 5%, normal for the retail market. Each packet or deck will sell for $5. Thus, the original 22 pounds of raw opium, sold by a Turkish farmer for $350, is eventually worth, on the sidewalks of Manhattan, over $410,000, and, in a panic, half a million. This is the focal point of hard drug addiction in the United States. The urban ghettos house nearly three-fourths of the hardcore addicts, with New York's teeming slums far out in front. The traffic starts in Manhattan. It's uh, more readily obtainable in Manhattan, especially in the Harlem area, up around uh, Lexington Avenue, from about 97th to around 135th Street, 116th Street, running east to west.